A man from Manchester was involved in a serious incident with some dangerous and unscrupulous individuals in the parish of Manchester. The Manchester police are currently investigating the Shellings incident that took the life of 35-year-old Richard Powell in Chantilly. Mr. Powell and his spouse were pounced upon at approximately 9 p.m. by a dangerous individual as they were traveling home in the community of Chantilly. Based on police reports, Mr. Powell had earlier sold his car for $700,000. It is further reported that Mr. Powell and his spouse decided to take home the sum of money after he encountered difficulties trying to make the deposit at the bank. The police theorized that Mr. Powell was followed to the location where he and his spouse were pounced upon. He resisted the men. However, he was harmed during the incident. He was taken to the Mandeville Regional Hospital where he was pronounced by the medical team. Dangerous individual escaped with the bag containing the $700,000. Many persons are in shock and total disbelief as they are unable to process that this man lost his life in this way. They have stated that they are living in dangerous times. The man was so quiet and humble. He never deserved to pass away in this manner. The police are appealing for persons to take the necessary precautions when conducting business with large sums of money. The incident was followed by the Shellings incident that took the life of MacDonald and caused harm to a woman during a cookout in Davidton in the parish of Manchester as well. Based on reports at approximately 9.30 p.m., MacDonald and the woman were pounced upon by dangerous individuals who opened shellings, hitting them. They were taken to the Mandeville Regional Hospital where MacDonald was pronounced by the medical team and the woman admitted for hospital care. Minister of Local Government Desmond Mackenzie has mentioned that ground will be broken for the construction of a new conflagration station in Ulster Spring in South Sri Lanka in August. Mackenzie emphasized that the establishment of this station will be the fulfillment of his commitment to the people of Southern Trelawney, its Member of Parliament, Marissa Dalrymple Filbert, and the councillors of same. He advised that he was pleased to advise that hopefully by the end of August, they will be able to break ground for the construction of this station over in Ulster Spring. He mentioned this while he was addressing a special meeting of the Trelawney Municipal Corporation on July 8th. Trelawney is now served by one station which is in Falmouth. Mackenzie, in underscoring the need for the new facility, said that if a conflagration starts in communities in South Trelawney, assistance is being sought from these stations in the neighboring parish of Manchester. He further emphasized that with the increased infrastructural Developments taking place in Northern Trelawney. He has committed to increasing the capacity of the units at the Falmouth station. Mackenzie informed that the parish is to benefit from a fleet of 30 trucks purchased by the ministry, 15 of which are already in Jamaica. He further noted that the additional 15 trucks are expected to arrive in Jamaica before September. The president's passing in Haiti has left a power vacuum. People in Haiti are currently undergoing unrest. Asians are not only concerned about who took out their president, but they are concerned about who will be running the country's affairs. At least three men claim to be the legitimate head of government, complicating the investigation into the passing of the president and fueling a race to fill the political power vacuum. Challenges are mounting against interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph, who is ruling Haiti with the backing of lean police and military forces that have long lacked resources. He has pledged to work with the opposition and allies of President Jovenel Moise, who lost his life on Wednesday at his private residence during an incident in which his wife Martine was also harmed and taken to Miami where she remains in hospital. A few persons are waiting for Mr. Joseph to make his next moves. 
coalition of main opposition parties called the Democratic and Popular Sector have said that Haiti lacks a leader. This is autopilot. This situation must not continue. The country is unfortunately witnessing a proliferation of proposals for exiting the crisis, which further complicates the task. Chen presented its own proposal for the creation of what is called the Independent Moral Authority, which would be made up of human rights activists, religious leaders, academics, and others who would be charged with reviewing and merging all proposals for the benefit of the country. Members of Haiti's civil society are expected to unveil their own findings for Haitian resolution for this serious multidimensional crisis that is causing issues and unrest across the island. Ariel Henry, who was appointed as Prime Minister by Jovenel Moise before he passed away, has said that he is the rightful Prime Minister of Haiti, but has been left out of discussions with top government officials. He, however, has the support of a group of well-known politicians who considered Moise's allies as very important, and who recently chose Joseph Lambert as the head of Haiti's dismantled Senate as provisional president. Lambert was supposedly to be sworn in on Sunday as a symbolic act, but the event was cancelled at the last minute because he said not all of his supporters could be present. Joseph, Henry and Lambert met on Sunday with a U.S. delegation that included representatives from the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security, who flew to Haiti to encourage dialogue to reach a political accord that can enable the country to hold free and fair elections. Based on reports, a delegation received a request for additional assistance to Haiti. There is also a request for U.S. military assistance. However, this remains under review as it was suggested that political uncertainty on the ground was a complicating factor as the administration weighs how to provide assistance. What is clear, however, from their trip is that there is a lack of clarity about the future of political leadership. Haiti is also seeking security assistance from the United Nations. The UN has been involved in Haiti on and off since 1990. But the last UN military peacekeepers left the country in 2017. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about all the stories that have been shared in this session. Thanks for watching and goodbye.